Hey everyone, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to give you a tour of my pantry. It's a working pantry. <laughs> Just know that. <laughs> um, I have the main pantry off of the kitchen, and then I have a bake center, and then I have um, two cupboards with spices, and then I have the basement where I keep like overflow uh, things and also all the things that we can and grow in the garden and uh, preserve for the uh, upcoming year. And our goal was always to grow more things that our family uses and slowly but surely <laughs> we're making some headway. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I'm going to give you a tour of the pantry today and then um, tomorrow I'm going to give you a freezer tour and then uh, the next day I'm going to give you a tour of like how we store household items. Uh, those are the three different uh, categories and without further ado, I wanted to say that for the longest time because everybody does on YouTube and <laughs> I never have. Without further ado, here is the pantry tour. <laughs> I keep my spices. This is right to the right of the stove. I keep them alphabetized because it just is easier to find things. And then on the very top, I have some seasoning packets. When I buy new ones, I put the new ones in the back and kind of push the old ones forward so that it just rotates. To the left of the stove, I have more spices. And the overflow is in those three baskets. And then some things I buy in bulk, uh, a lot of the Mexican uh, chili peppers and epizote and Mexican oregano. And then I have some Indian spices up there. It's just um, all my spices. We're in the basement and this is where we keep our overflow pantry as well as all of the canning that we do. In this corner, we have a couple of shelves that houses all of the canning. And then I have one shelf over here that has uh, some empty jars. I have another shelf and a half in the garage uh, of jars. I need to get them on this shelf and then Ken just made another shelf so that it'll accommodate them. But I wanna get all of my canning in one place. That's the goal. Up top, I have containers for the regular canning bands, wide canning bands, canning lids, which is like you feel like you, you score when you find some canning lids these days, and then just regular canning supplies. I'm just gonna take the canning row by row. This is some apple cider jelly. This is some apple pie jam. This is a ball recipe. It just sets up so beautifully. It's my youngest son's favorite jam love that we have crab apples on our property and i remember when i was a little girl my grandma used to uh, make this beautiful platter at thanksgiving and she would decorate the platter with like sage and she'd cut up the turkey in really beautiful slices and she would always take a jar of canned crab apples and decorate the platter. And then at some point during the meal, all of us little kids would take one of the little apples and we'd eat it. <laughs> so it brings back all those memories of my grandma. Now we have a couple of dozen of different varieties of apple trees. So this next couple weeks, we have great weather. Normally we get a freeze like mid-September, but we're having an Indian summer. We haven't had a freeze uh, yet. And so this next two weeks, I need to get really busy and get a bunch of apples canned, both applesauce, chunky applesauce, apple butter, apple everything. <laughs> so I'll definitely fill up that rest of the row there. On this shelf, we have some whole cranberry sauce. I like to put it in the uh, half pint jars and the jelly jars. Sometimes like when you have leftover turkey and you just make a sandwich, the little tiny uh, jelly jars is just enough to put some cranberries on it. I just have some cranberry jelly here. The idea behind the cranberry jelly uh, really was to 
use it as a jelly with meat. Like, you know, like normally you have like mint jelly with lamb. I thought this would be great maybe with a pork and then maybe do like a rice pilaf with it with some sliced almonds and craisins, you know, like replicate the flavor. Here's some fig butter. I have cherries that we raised. We have tart and we have sweet cherries and I have them in the freezer. Next year I'm going to add a Rainier cherry to our orchard but um, I'll get some cherries stuff canned here. Over here we have some great products. We raise a uh, Concord grapes and then we have two table grapes a red and a green that are seedless so this year I went ahead and I canned some grape Concord grape juice and then I have some grape jelly that I canned and then this is just some store-bought that I had in the pantry once I get through this I'm not going to be buying it anymore the next row we have some mint jelly for lamb I grow mint in uh, containers now these were the nectarines that I got from Bailey when we went and picked up our whole cow and our two pigs and this was so awesome I had a little bit left over not enough to can a jar and that night I had brined some pork chops Ken grilled them and he used the nectarine jam as a glaze oh it was so good you guys so 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 good <laughs> So I'll definitely do nectarine um, uh, jam again. I hadn't done nectarine jam before, uh, so I'm pleasantly surprised with that. Now, I love canning pineapple. I have a couple jars of store-bought. Again, I'm not going to buy store-bought uh, pineapple, probably. Um, I love canning pineapple. It's one of my favorite things. Now, this is pineapple jam. It's Noreen's from Noreen's Kitchen, her recipe. That girl has won, I don't know how many blue ribbons, you know, like at state and county uh, fairs with this recipe. How I like to use it is if I make a sweet and sour sauce or um, it's great. Like if you're doing like a big crowd uh, you have over and you're doing like banana splits as one of the things. And then have some more pineapple. Now this was... Uh, white peaches I got from Bailey's father-in-law and I made some jam and at the very end I added about a third a cup of DiSorno that almond liqueur oh my gosh I imagine if you don't have the liqueur you could probably add some almond extract and it would be fine all right now this is some pomegranate jelly and I wanted to do the same kind of thing use it as a glaze or as an accompaniment to some kind of meat and then maybe have a nice salad with the pomegranate aerials just kind of replicate that flavor again this is exciting i made some pomegranate molasses it's the first time i've ever done that i've already used it all up this is the last jar <laughs> you basically reduce the pomegranate juice and then when you open the jar you can reduce it even further to make like a glaze oh excellent i definitely will be canning that again and then this is just strawberry uh jam and i just use like the old-fashioned recipe that just has sugar and strawberries i don't like using pectin or that kind of thing with strawberry jam because i've always had my strawberries float when i do that and i don't like that i like it all mixed together and then i do have some uh store-bought strawberry jam and when that's gone, I don't think that I'm going to buy it anymore because next season we're putting a whole bed of strawberries in. So I hope that I can be successful in raising strawberries. This next row just has some store-bought jalapenos, candied jalapenos, uh, dill pickle chips, some green chilies, just random kind of stuff like that. Now this right here is the marinade that you use when you do the cowboy candy. And this is an excellent marinade on like beef jerky, meat. It's also a wonderful glaze, like if you're uh, barbecuing some stuff. Uh, don't throw that away. <laughs> Can it. It's really, really good stuff. This is just a thing of pepper jelly. 
Over here, I have uh, the cowboy candy. I showed you guys how to make that. And then I have this one that's like really diced, really fine, I guess, cowgirl candy. <laughs> but I could have a whole row of this. I could never have enough cowboy candy on my shelf. It's kind of like I have to like ration it out. But I still have jalapenos in the garden. So I'm hoping I can get a couple more rows of cowboy candy this season. Here I have pickled beets and like the cowboy candy, I don't think I could ever have too many pickled beets. Our family loves them in salads. They go really well with blue cheese dressing if you like that kind of thing. But I have some more beets in the garden. Um, these I actually grew. These ones I got from the Amish store and then I have more that are in the garden. And then those were just from Trader Joe's. And that one was from the Amish store. But I hope to get some more canned and get them on the shelves regardless of where they come from. <laughs> so more pickled beets, probably some pickled cabbage, uh, red cabbage for sandwiches. Um, we do that Reuben sandwich and I need to can a couple of jars of that for the Reuben sandwich. Now these are dilly beans. I just have a couple of cans. I didn't go crazy with them, but I use those when we make like a niswa salad. Sometimes I'll put salmon on it. Sometimes I'll put chicken on it, but it's really handy to have the, the dilly beans for that. I like having that vinegar flavor with that salad. Next shelf. This has got to be one of my favorite things to can. It's caramelized onions. I have them in the little jelly jars and I have them in the half pints. Those are pressure canned, but they save so much time uh, having to caramelize onions, you know, all the time. Or even sometimes like we'll have just um, hamburgers or something and we'll pop one of these and put the caramelized onions on the burger. Delicious. Um, these are brandied mushrooms. I love uh, canning mushrooms, even just um, non-brandied mushrooms. They're excellent to can. Now this is something I canned for the first time this year. I had this recipe for a while. It's a ball recipe, the Thai dipping sauce. And I thought that maybe I could um, not have to buy the Trader Joe's sweet chili sauce because we really like this on uh, pot stickers, that kind of thing. But this is a little bit different from that. Similar, but different. Has a little bit more vinegar. So how we've been using this is when we take like a rice paper and put fresh veggies in it and maybe some uh, Thai coconut chicken or maybe some shrimp, things like that. And because it's mostly vegetables, this is really good because it does have the vinegar. I love it with that. Now I added a little bit of clear gel to this and a little bit of red food coloring to make it a little thicker and to give it that color. We have some uh, pickled pepperoncinis. I raised these in the garden this year. I hope there's enough out there to do a few more cans. I like using these when we do Italian subs or the Mississippi pot roast, that kind of thing. Now I canned some hamburger dill slices. I did most of them in these half pint jars. This is enough for our family, but you know, we always have a big crowd at our house. So I did can some in the bigger pint jar um, when we have a lot of people over. And then this is some dill relish. I did them in all these little small jars. That's enough. If we have to open two, that's fine too. Now this would go with the red cabbage. This is some dill stackers. I did a couple of jars. Um, usually we have Rubens a couple times a year, so that's plenty. And then those are just some dill pickles, kosher dill pickles. All right. Getting down to one of my favorite categories of canned things, and this is pie fillings. This is the white peach pie filling. Oh my gosh. It's wonderful. I also canned it in some small jars, the half pint jars, because I figure I could use this um, 
in a variety of ways. I could make a tart out of it. I could use it to stuff a donut, a homemade donut, you know, just all kinds of stuff like that. Now look at this one. This is a thing of beauty. This is not my cherries. I got these at the Amish store, but look at that pie filling. Is that not gorgeous? Oh my gosh. And of course I can those in some small jars as well. And let's see. I can the strawberries and the quartz and the small ones as well. I'm gonna do apples and then I have blueberries that I froze from our blueberry plants that I'm gonna do the pie filling with as well. I love doing the pie fillings. Okay, down here we have some brandied cherries. Now these were Rainier cherries and they don't look very good. <laughs> <laughs> they taste really, really super good. Um, I use them like uh, if we have to have like a quick dessert, if we have somebody stop by, I usually have vanilla ice cream in the freezer. You heat these up and you can add a little bit of brandy. You can even flambe them and have a, like a cherry's jubilee. I've made these for years, but this was the first time that I uh, canned the Rainier cherries and I won't do it again just because it doesn't look very pretty. I'll just definitely use the red uh, cherries. And um, I do have the, some cherries from our trees in the freezer, so I'll probably do another row of those, maybe like four pints and get them on the shelf because it's a really nice to have for uh, a quick dessert. And this kind of surprised me. It just took all the color off of the Rainier cherries. Now these are taste good, they just aren't red. This is that clear gel. Like if you never heard of clear gel, it's a, a thickener that's approved for canning. It's kind of hard to find. Um, I found it online through Amazon and I've also found it at the Amish stores. And then just really quick down here, cause I did share this in a separate video. I'm just gonna briefly uh, go over this. This is vanilla extract, vanilla bean paste, vanilla sugar. This is some maple syrup. Uh, we have uh, some mature maple trees that came from my uh, cousin's maple farm. And then about five, four or five years ago, we planted five-year-old uh, maple trees. So we have like 30 maple trees that are getting some good growth. So eventually we'll be uh, doing our own. And then we have honey. Uh, we have honey bees. Some of this honey is from uh, one of our friends. He's been mentoring us, molasses. And then we have some carol syrup on the top shelf up there we just have some vinegar some bottled lemon juice uh in that bushel basket we just have some canning supplies uh that type of stuff we had a late start to tomato season here we had a really wet spring i wasn't sure i was going to be able to can enough sauce for the year but it looks like we might just make it so all of this is just tomato sauce and then I have some more quart size up there and then I have a little bit of salsa uh, this was from last year I think I have like three jars and there's some store-bought and then I'm gonna start making some salsa this week we have jalapenos we have we harvested our onions we have uh, tomatoes still coming in that kind of thing so I think I'm gonna go for the uh, salsa and then when I was at Trader Joe's I bought some pizza sauce I would have preferred to can it myself but I wasn't really sure we we're gonna have enough tomatoes so I bought some um, it is what it is. <laughs> and then I have some uh, pork and beans, just residual. When they're gone, they're going to be gone. I'll uh, go ahead and uh, can my beans. Now, artichokes, I did have six or seven artichoke plants, but I don't think I'll ever have enough artichoke plants to meet our artichoke need. <laughs> so this is a lot of store-bought stuff. Uh, artichokes, I like the grilled artichokes that Trader Joe's have. They're excellent. 
this is artichoke antipasta and then this is some artichokes that I use when I make the artichoke dip so that's our artichoke stash um, these are some chopped clams those are uh, just canned chicken I got those just because I knew that we were going to be uh, canning a lot more stuff from the garden and I can get to canned chicken anytime you know do that anytime so I have a whole row here for canned meat I'll get that done in the fall into the winter I do have some canned pinto beans here I do want to add some pork and beans and garbanzo beans there's some stew it's probably the one thing that I can that's like a meal ready to go uh, most of the stuff I can is like an ingredient canner and then there's some green beans this is some lard that I rendered from our pig. This is just canning supplies and I have enough that I'll fill this cart and one more cart. Over here, we just have a stash of coffee. Uh, they like the donut shop, they like the McCafe. And then uh, I did get a dark roast. One of my son prefers the dark roast. So I wanted to have him give that a try, see if he likes it. We have hot cocoa, tea, uh, there's my tea stash there, a little bit of peanut butter, some chocolate milk mix, uh, some of the shelf stable uh, milk. I don't carry a lot of that, but it's nice to have, especially when you have a storm and you're, <laughs> you're snowed in. I do have quite a bit of evaporated milk, sweetened condensed milk, uh, media crema, that kind of thing. Uh, definitely a product of the 60s. There's a lot of really good evaporated milk recipes. And then down here, let's see here, we have pickles, dill pickles, bread and butter pickles, petite dill pickles, the French pickles, the big kosher dill pickles, uh, pepperoncinis, uh, this, is just like the rest of the stash. I hope that I can figure out how many plants I need so that I can meet our pepperoncini goal. <laughs> uh, we do use a lot of them. And the same thing with the sweet cherry peppers. I raised those and the hot peppers. I wanted to do that Italian blend, the hoagie spread blend, and I just didn't have good luck with those peppers this year. They put like two, three, peppers out on the plant. Okay, down here on the bottom shelf is everything olive, uh, all kinds of varieties of olives down here. Obviously, I'm not gonna be growing olives. <laughs> not in the zone five, huh? On this shelf up here, I have the gallon-sized corn. Um, if we have a big crowd, I like to just saute the corn in butter, salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic, and it's always a hit. I have a little bit of Campbell soup. I have one chicken noodle for one sick person this fall. <laughs> and the rest of it is cream of mushroom, uh, cream of chicken. You could do a lot with that. We always buy the big cans of tuna. I tell you, tuna used to be like a, a 16 ounce, then it went to 12 ounce, then it went to nine ounce, then it went yeah, I think six and a half, six, five and a half. I think it's down to what, five ounces for a can of tuna, it's mostly water. Our family is just too big to even mess with that. So we get this big thing of tuna and I might make tuna noodle casserole and then the rest of it goes for tuna salad. This next shelf is kind of an Asian themed. I really like having different products on hand. I like to try different kinds of ethnic food. We have soy sauce and spam and a dark soy sauce and an oyster sauce, hoisin, our, our Trader Joe's little dipping sauce and uh, sriracha and uh, tamari. Um, we have mandarin oranges. I use those when we make a uh, Asian salad. Uh, chestnuts. I think this is a bean paste. And then whenever I go to like a, a specialty store like that, I just like to try different things. There's some Japanese mayo in there. There's the sriracha mayo for like uh, sushi. 
plum sauce, hoisin sauce. There's a couple different kinds of vinegars again, some mirin. I have sake in the fridge upstairs. There's the hot peppers back there. This is that umami that I want to give a try, sesame oil, um, minced garlic. I don't really like to go grocery shopping. I like to go to specialty stores and try to get a lot of this kind of stuff. You know, that's what's to me is fun with cooking. Okay, down here, this is that Marsala simmer sauce with the uh, Marsala vegetables. That was something new that I want to try from Trader Joe's. This is a, a pineapple forward a teriyaki sauce, some chutney. And then these are the noodles I like to do when we make that Asian salad. We have tahini to make some uh, hummus. Now I bought a couple cans of garbanzo beans, but I'm going to can some garbanzo beans and get them on the shelf as well. This is another mango chutney. Uh, some red curry paste. And then I have coconut milk, coconut cream. I don't know, this is a random... Cookies. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna find. Um, some curry paste and then the red curry sauce. And then back there I have the green curry sauce with these products, which I've never tried before. I'm gonna try to do a yellow curry. And I bought some stock. I need to get off my lazy behind and get some chicken stock and beef stock uh, canned. I have the, the bones from our um, uh, cow in the freezer. I have a whole big bag of like chicken backs and that kind of stuff. I just need to get the time to do it. Now this is all canned right here. Vienna sausages and sardines. I don't like them. He'll eat them on a cracker and be a happy man. So that's his little stash. This is kind of like the little Italian section. I have sliced pimentos. I tried to raise pimentos again this year and just like the cherry peppers, I just got a handful of them. I didn't get enough to really can, which I wanted to do. This is that uh, pumpkin Alfredo sauce. I use the um, cannellini beans when I make pasta fagioli. I just went ahead and I put some of the um, uh, basil pesto in here. I do grow my own pe uh, basil and I did put up some uh, fresh pesto this year. I froze it, but I didn't have enough. I think I needed a couple of jars to kind of get us through. We have some arborio rice, some capers. We have uh, some nor bouillon chicken cubes. This is just like a little bit of overflow. On this shelf, we have a lot of different olive oils, avocado oil, a little bit of canola, and then there's um, some spray canola. There's uh, spray olive oil. There's some uh, anchovies for homemade uh, Caesar salad dressing. There's some of the speedy marinades. And then somehow I got some ranch and blue cheese dressings. I think my brother bought them when he was here because I don't usually buy those, but we'll use them up. And then it's, not, it's just not something that I normally buy. We have a stash of uh, ketchup, barbecue sauce, mayo. Um, we have one of those packs, you know, that has everything. We have mustard, a couple types of mustard. I have more mustard upstairs in my everyday pantry. Uh, we like a lot of different mustards. There's some more salsa, hot sauces. These are just like uh, replacements. There's a big thing of, of jalapenos, like if we have a big party and we're doing uh, nachos, we have some rotel back there. I intend to start canning that myself. I don't really need to buy that. We have one can of Chipotle. I don't really go through a lot of that. And when I use it, I, I freeze the rest. So a can is gonna last me a good six months. Now this year I went ahead and I got tomato products cause I didn't know I was gonna uh, have an Indian summer <laughs> and uh, do okay with the tomato production, but it is what it is. Uh, tomato sauce, tomato paste, diced tomatoes, and then just a variety of tomato products. And then down here, I love vinegars. I make some homemade vinegars. I think 
Did I show you guys how to make the pineapple vinegar for like making Hawaiian dishes and stuff? But you can, vinegars are just like really cool thing to get into. And down here I have all kinds, apple cider, white wine. I'm, I mean, just a whole variety of vinegars. And then I have some hot sauces. I have some random uh, steak sauces, uh, chili sauce, and uh, I think a seafood um, sauce down there. So this is just, you know, more condiments. This is my pantry off of the kitchen and it's definitely a working pantry. So I have these Rubbermaid shelves and on them I just try to keep like one of everything kind of thing. Um, lots of pickles and olives and vinegars oils, balsamic vinegars, some Italian specialty items, mustards, um, more Italian items on the bottom. On this one we have um, hot dog relish, sauerkraut, even some hot dog chili sauce. This is definitely the boys shelf. <laughs> And then getting into like more pepperoncinis and sweet cherry peppers and the Italian mixes, that kind of stuff. Down here we have pickled onions and sliced jalapenos. This is the cherry peppers that I wanted to can this year, but my peppers didn't do as well as I wanted. Um, there's always next year, next year's garden goals, horseradish, jerkins, this is just a little bit of everything. I need to take this preserved lemon sticker off because Trader Joe's doesn't have them anymore. But I do preserve my own lemon. I have the anchovies to make Caesar salad dressing. I like this Noor vegetable mix where you, you make the spinach dip. I have pesto and sun-dried tomatoes and capers and artichoke hearts. This is my, <laughs> this is my little high-tech, uh, when I buy, blind bake a pie crust, I put the beans in there on some uh, foil and I keep them here because I don't want anybody to try to eat them. <laughs> Probably be as hard as anything. Okay, down here is just a hodgepodge, uh, steak sauces, Worcestershire, some fig butter, um, I like to use this when I make a pasta Italian salad. Uh, just add that to it. And down here, some hot sauces. Down there, some miscellaneous stuff. It's a shelf on top. It has all kinds of balsamic vinegar and red wine, honey, um, soy sauce, some shortening, just lots of odds and ends. This area here has all the pastas. All the pastas for the whole year. Behind the door, I have the same shelving. I have chicken breasts, um, salmon, some canned peach halves and cherries. I have dates and figs and that kind of thing here. Garbanzo beans, we really like hummus. This is some kidney beans and black beans I'm trying to work through. More garbanzo beans. And some tortilla strips for salads. I have some of the hatch chili down there. There's some more uh, chipotle, uh, just a variety of things salsa verde, that kind of stuff. And then I have my grocery bags at the bottom. On the very top shelf, I have these baskets and I just store like paper products, freezer prep, bake center refill, and hot beverage refill. It's just easier to take these down and refill the different areas in the kitchen. And then over here is kind of like the Asian section. I have spring wrappers, uh, noodles, 
water chestnuts, a whole bunch of different kinds of seasonings. And then we get into the couscous and the split peas and the farro and the quinoa. And then some Japanese mayonnaise, some fr French's fried onions, a little bit of Cajun going in here with the dirty rice and the jambalaya and the fish fry stuff. Uh, that's for some tabbouleh. This is some saffron and some sesame oil. And then my Uncle Ben's, my little cheat that I like to use. Uh, I have some brining bags for turkey and I uh, have a turkey gravy. Down here, some tahini, some miso soup, and then some more pasta and uh, different kinds of salts, that kind of thing. In this corner over here is a lot of Japanese stuff. We uh, started doing sushi night. It's been lots of fun. Uh, we have sushi rice and the nori packets and um, pickled ginger and uh, different things like that. Um, we just have loved doing home, sushi at home. Probably wouldn't have done it if COVID hadn't hit. In here we have things for uh, the fire pit so we could do s'mores. We have popcorn um, in a lots of different flavors. It's always fun. To, to popcorn and then everybody can put whatever kind of flavor they want on it. We have probably a dozen different flavors. And then I have some, of course, cookie butter and then the crunchy cookie butter. It's so good from Trader Joe's. And I have just some caramel dips here. All of this is really good if you just cut up some apples and you dip it. Oh, one of my faves. When Ken built these shelves, he built them so I could fit five gallon buckets down here. Like I said, this is a working pantry. Uh, we have old fashioned oats, pancake mix, um, just add water to that, flour, sugar, um, bread making flour, uh, chilies, some more pasta overflow. Um, and uh, they work out really good. They have the tops that can screw on and screw off and I can replenish uh, these items in the bake center re very easily. And I just have these uh, bins for onions and potatoes and garlic and sweet uh, potatoes, that kind of thing. Works out pretty good. On this shelf, we have some popcorn, some chips for like walk-in tacos, that kind of thing. Sometimes I'll have Doritos, sometimes I'll have Fritos, it just depends. And then in the back, it's just some um, just basic items, kind of the stuff that I have down in the basement. And um, I go shopping in the basement. You know, when I do my meal plan, if I don't have it up here, I'll go downstairs and shop for it. <laughs> but just a variety of things, breadcrumbs. This is my little stash of uh, brownie mix. I even have a blueberry muffin mix. I like having that stuff on hand. There's some powdered potatoes and I'm not sure where they came from, but uh, I'll use them up and we'll go through them. I don't normally uh, buy those. Uh, Ken's assortment of crackers. And then over here I have a couple of the strawberry cakes with the strawberry uh, jello and uh, makes a really nice poke cake. And then over here, I just have these peak containers and they're just filled with a variety of things. Crackers, the fried onion toppings for salads, uh, breadcrumbs. <laughs> they're three deep. Um, and uh, I really like these a lot. On this shelf, I have a bunch of different nuts and peanut butters and uh, some seasoning packets. Just um, here's some of that vinegar, the pineapple vinegar. Pineapple vinegar. Yep. And then red cabbage, orange marmalade. Ken likes this. Some whipping cream, some beef broth, some juices. Um, I have some number 10 cans here of stuff. This is chopped onions, some non-fat milk, um, banana chips, there's that uh, pumpkin spice cake that I usually get. And then up here is some more peat containers. And what I do is I make a little label so I know what's in front, what's the second one, what's the third one. So I know where everything is at. I have 
um, like some cranberries and dried um, blueberries and that kind of thing. And it just helps me know where everything is. In this container, it's like a lot of stuff for baking. I just threw it in there because our bake center is quite full. We have some Chinese noodles. Um, we have the bulgur wheat for tabbouleh, uh, stuff to make tamales, uh, some shelf stable milk, Velveeta cheese, and some tuna hanging out in the back. In the very, very corner, I have a grocery sack and it has all of my corn husks in there to make pork tamales. They freeze very well and I need to make some really soon. <laughs> this is my bake center and I organized my kitchen in one gallon containers. So like the five gallon working buckets of flour and sugar um, because I go through so much of it. You know it's five gallons but like everything else is pretty much one gallon size containers and I've given you guys a tour of the bake center I think I'll put a link in the description box because nothing's really changed it's the same that it was before but I'll put a link in the description box put a card up top and if you want to see what what's here how it's set up uh, you can do that that's my pantry it's a working pantry. Remember that. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll show you the freezers slash refrigeration storage that I have. And then the next day, it'll just be like the household uh, storage. All right. See you guys in the next video.